Hey everybody, Jeff here and welcome back to the channel. We have a great video for you today. We are reviewing the Milwaukee Hatchet 6 inch pruning saw. Now, if you've not heard of this, that's because it's a brand new tool. Milwaukee just announced this back in August as part of their Milwaukee 2020 pipeline of new tools. And in fact, we just got this in our Home Depot store about a month ago. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what do you do with this pruning saw? Well, this is like having an electric pole saw. It's like a little miniature chainsaw, but only it's in your hand instead of on a pole. And this particular chainsaw here can cut through up to three inches of hardwood. Okay, now remember one thing, this is tool only, so batteries and charger are not included. So you have to have your own M12 battery. Remember, this is on the M12 platform. It's a 12 volt battery. Okay, so I have mine here. I'm using the XC 4.0. These are the uh, extended size battery, so these would give you plenty of cut time. Well, you ready to see what she's got inside the box? Let's go check it out. Yeah, so ironically, this was actually on display in our store uh, for about a month, but even though they didn't have it in stock, and when they finally got it in the other day, you saw me put it in my cart there during my live stream at Home Depot, showing you all of the top Black Friday bargains at the time. And if, even though this is $179, you guys know me, I didn't pay $179 for this. You should never pay full price when you can show up with one of these at Home Depot because they will take the Lowe's 10% off coupon here as a competitor's match, right? And so you get 10% off of that. So even though that's $179, I only paid $161.10 for this tool. Okay, so we have the owner's manual here and I highly suggest you read the owner's manual. I know a lot of people like to make fun of me when I say that, but if you've never used a chainsaw before, and even if you have, there's a lot of things you can learn about the proper usage of these and holding them and safety because, you know, you could kill somebody with this. And then here's their little catalog that they give you. And the cardboard piece comes out and then out comes the entire tool. Okay, so here we are. That's what she looks like there. And then your battery just plugs right onto the back here, like this. Snaps right in place. Wonder if it will stand up on its own. Yeah, it does. That's pretty good. Yeah, so there it is, standing up nice and proud. All right, so let's see how tall it is. Got the old trusty Lufkin night eye. So it looks like it's just around 18 inches tall. And then at the maximum width, which appears to be somewhere around here, I'm going with about nine inches. Then if you come to the base here, you'll see it's about four and a half inches. And right here in the midsection, it looks to be about six inches wide. And let's flip it around and take a look at the back side of it. Okay, now the great reveal, we'll pull the shield off. And there she is, folks. is like all chainsaws, you know, you need oil. So there's an oil reservoir here and you do not operate this hatchet six inch pruning saw without oil in there. So we're going to put some in there now and this automatically pumps it to the chain. Yeah, one source of problem for me with M12s is the batteries are always, you gotta use so much finger strength to get those out. Okay, so what we've got here is a bottle of premium bar and chain oil. That's what you fill up the oil reservoir with. It's 
So you can see when you've got enough in there, see how the level goes up like that? That's how you know. Okay, now we can put the battery back on. Okay, now here's one thing that's always bothered me about the Milwaukee M12 batteries, and that is the fact that these M12 batteries don't have any battery gauge built onto them. So you have no way of knowing how much battery life is left until you plug the battery in and stick it on a tool and the gauge is actually on the M12 tool. That's the main thing that bothers me about the M12 tools. So here you go, you gotta push it in here and you gotta actually operate the tool just to see the gauge. It sounds kind of backwards to me. And here you've got it folks. Say hello to my little friend. Okay, now the way we operate the handsaw is they want you to use the reverse grip like this. Hold it like this with two hands. But to get the chainsaw spinning, you have to be able to push this button in with your index finger. And that requires some significant finger dexterity and strength to be able to push it sideways with it while you pull on the trigger. So you could probably do it with just the one finger if you're good at it. So you push in like that, right, then you pull the trigger. And what you're supposed to do is make sure you're up at full speed before you contact the chain and the bar here to your wood. And you never want to come in on the tip like that because that's how you get kickback and it's going to make your saw go back like that. The number one problem with chainsaws is kickback. So you want to make sure your blade's at full speed and that you come in at it. Okay, so here's another close-up shot of it. You come in with your finger like that, push it on the button, and then you pull the trigger. Get it, get it in up far enough to be able to get past the lock to disengage it. If you only go halfway in with the button, you won't be able to pull the trigger, see? So your finger has to really have some strength to get way in there and push that button down. And then you've got it. So here's another reason to make sure that you're keeping both hands on it. And you should only touch this thing by the handles. That's the only place you should ever be putting your hands at. And that's because there's a lot of moving parts. You've got the chain over here, and on the underside of it, you can see the chain is sort of uncovered. And if you were to put your fingers in here or try to hold it like this, you know, or hold it like that, you know, you're going to jam your thumb in there. Now your thumb's going to get sliced off. So you have to be really careful with that. That's why I tell people, read all of the instructions. Read all of the warnings. Okay, so here's the close-up shot of the battery gauge. You push in the butts in there, pull the trigger a little bit just to get it started, and it... Shows you the LEDs. In my opinion, though, it doesn't leave them on long enough to give you a chance to look at it. You gotta be looking at it right away. Okay, so your Milwaukee hatchet six inch pruning saw comes with its own wrench built right onto the bottom here, see it? And so if you have to adjust the tension on your chain, it just pops right out like that, see? So you would use this socket here on the guide bar nut. So that helps adjust the, which way the bar is going. And then this is your tensioning screw right here. So you will adjust this, and it tells you, it's got the diagram on here, which way adjusts the tension. So everything that you need to get at is right there, front and center. And remember, any adjustments that you do or anything here, you got to take the battery off. Always remove the battery when you're doing any type of maintenance whatsoever. The only time the battery really needs to be on your tool is when you're going to use it for pruning. Okay, now to put the wrench back, it just settles down right in there. And snaps right back into place. Okay, so now before you can operate your Milwaukee Hatchet six inch pruning saw, I just got a little safety bit for you. And so just let me show you something here. I sound like Fire Marshal Bill, don't I? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. So you gotta have your eyewear on. You gotta have protective eyewear because this stuff's gonna be throwing up chips of wood. Okay, so the first test material we have right here is a one inch by one inch piece of wood and so let's just go ahead and see if it can cut through that we get it up to full speed make sure you don't come on it like that at the point you're gonna slice right through the middle of it. I had to tighten down the clamp a little bit it wasn't holding okay here we go so it went right through pretty easily let's do another one Okay, so now we've upped the ante a little bit and we've put some one by two wood down. So let's try this, see how it looks.
goes right through like butter, almost like butter. All right, so now I've decided to up the ante even further and I've got a two by four on here. Now Milwaukee says here that their Milwaukee hatchet six inch pruning saw can only do up to three inches of wood. We'll see if it can do anything on this. This Milwaukee Hatchet 6 inch pruning saw is model number 2527-20. And remember this is a tool only package, there's no battery and no charger that comes with it, you have to supply your own. Milwaukee claims to have unmatched control and access and the power to cut 3 inch hardwoods and they claim up to 120 cuts per charge of a two inch size diameter branch. For the specifications here, the Milwaukee Hatchet six inch pruning saw will give you 2,650 RPM. It has a chain speed of five meters per second. It has a bar length of six inches. It has a chain gauge of 0.043 inches. It has a chain pitch of 3 8 inch low profile and the trigger is variable speed. The length of this tool is 18.3 inches and the weight is 4.8 pounds with the battery. So here's another branch right here that's kind of hanging down over the fence and we want to cut it right here. See that? And here is the site of the cut on the branch that we cut off and it looks yeah, reasonably smooth. It didn't shred too much. Now this is a beautiful bush we have. Got attacked by these air plants that sucked all the life out of a lot of it. Uh, this whole branch right here is dead. It's just not gonna regrow. I think there's a little bit left on here. I, I don't know. It's been like this for a year, so we're just going to cut it off. So we'll cut it right down here. Accidentally nicked the other one there. Takes a little getting used to the tool because when you finally poke through, you're going to hit something. But this here will grow over. I got a question. Do you think that this Milwaukee hatchet will work here on these tinier twigs and branches on the hedges? Let's give it a try. Yeah, so far it seems. Not quite as efficient as the hedge clippers are though. They seem to really uh, slice through easier. Okay, so now I've come over here to my friend's house where he's got a lot of trees that are in some real need of cutting. So as you can see here, this branch, we have this large branch on this tree covering up the stop sign. We're trying to coax the canopy of the tree to grow upward and then we'll trim some of these other ones over here. They're useless, there's nothing going on here. Okay, so we're going to cut him probably right here. I don't want to cut off any of the collar. We call this the collar here. I want to try to get... So now with all of this flesh here, the tree will grow over that. Okay, next we have this other branch. It's only about two and a half feet long. It's really not doing anything. It's just kind of hanging, and any, anything that's going to grow off of it is just going to hang too low. So we're going to cut this one off and then we'll cut this other one that's the same thing. It's barely two feet long and it's not doing anything because somebody had cut it incorrectly at some point in the past.
I came back to this one and cut him down a little bit more just so that he's flush with the peak of the collar. I didn't, I didn't, you don't want to slice right up and make him flush with the trunk. What you want to do is make it peak with this little bump out here. So that way it'll grow right over it. It'll be a little smoother there. These are, we call these ear plants. These will suck the nutrients out of your trees. I've seen them kill lines of hedges. Okay, so I want to slice this thing up. Any of these little scruffy stragglers that aren't contributing, that aren't really doing anything for the tree, I just cut them off. So let's do this one here. Uh, how do we want to do this one? I think I'll cut this off first. Okay. Now I'll come in here and get this. Okay, so now this is going to be the most difficult cut that we're going to make with this tool now. And that's this big thick branch that we told you about that's blocking the stops. The mistake that most people make, I think, when they cut branches is they cut right up against the bark of the, of the, the main branch or the tree trunk, right? And that's the worst thing you can do. That will permanently damage your tree. Why? Because when you cut it, there's always going to be shredding and it's going to tear the bark down with it. That's not how you do it, folks. So the way we're going to do this today is we're going to do a three cut method here. And if you don't see anybody doing big branches like this with the three cut method, you better stop them. So what we're going to do is we come, this is where we want the branch to end flush with the, on the peak of the collar. So what we do is we're going to come about six inches away and we're going to do an undercut first that just goes one third the way into the branch. And what that does is this gives you sort of a little bit of a stress relief. And if, when you come in to do your second cut that goes all the way through the branch, the shredding will come all the way to that little first half cut that you made there, and it will end there. So think of that as sort of a shearing point. Think of it as sort of a pilot hole when you're drilling into wood. You've set already where everything's going to happen, and that's the end point. All right, you do first cut is a one-third undercut. The second cut, you go an inch or two down, and you go all the way through the branch. It will shred and stop at this cut. And when, every, when the big heavy branch is out of the way, now you're free to come in and make your clean cut at the peak of the collar here so that you still have flesh on the tree that will grow around the wound. So here's our branch. We're going to come about six inches away and go one third the way up. A couple of inches past. And I don't know if I can get the grip on here good enough and just make our cut. Actually, I'm gonna cut this guy out of the way first. Now we can come right past it. So you see how he cracked, but, but he ended up right here at the cut line. Because we made this cut line, we were able to get him to fall off perfectly and he landed exactly where we thought he would cleverly Study this and uh, strategically decide where we want to cut along that collar there to allow enough of the flesh of the bark to be able to grow around our site. Joe, let me just give you um, some safety precautions here, all right? Let me show you something, <laughs> like Fire Marshal Bill. Let me show you something. Um, what you saw me do here, you're not really supposed to do. I just did it this one time because of this one branch right here. You're not supposed to cut over your head, see? And you always want to make sure you're standing on a stable surface. But they really don't want you cutting over your head because they don't want branches falling on your... You're supposed to pretty much cut where you're at a comfortable level like this. Normally, if you're cutting big branches in a tree, you want to have a helmet on as well. But like I said, this was just one reasonably small branch about six, seven feet long, and I knew where it was going to lay. But I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that, some of these safety precautions that you need to take. And just look at me now, folks. Look at that. Now you can see the street and the stop sign there. The canopy is still intact on the tree up there. You really don't notice that the canopy was cut. And there's our branch. Normally, I wouldn't want to get rid of a branch that big, but it was just sticking out you know, way too far where it didn't belong. And most of the better cut trees, the canopies are higher. You want them to start higher off the ground, go up. So you see how the tree is still there. It's still intact, still has the canopy. And this will all fill in anyway. So you really want the trees to grow up and above the sun. Okay, now I want to show you close up here 
a better view of the three cut method. Here's the point where we want it to kind of go right around here, right? So we're gonna come a little bit past it and undercut one third in, right? Okay, so we're a little bit more, we're about a half. Now we're gonna come past it about an inch and do our cut. See, and then the branch would fall away. If this was up on the tree, the branch would fall away. And then we strategically look here. And remember, you don't wanna just cut it flush like that. You wanna be past the end of the collar here. So it looks to me like it's gonna be somewhere around here. Now, I don't know how well this is gonna hold. I'm gonna have to do it one-handed because it's not on a tree. Normally, it wouldn't be moving at all, but I'm just gonna go right here. So there you go. And that's sort of about where you want it to be, you know, where you still have some of the flesh from the tree there. And sometimes this won't give you a smooth cut. Well, it, it did not, and remember, this did not give us a smooth cut as we should have had because, you know, the branch was wiggling like this. It, it wasn't sitting up on a tree where it would be perfectly still and holding for you. Now the storm the other day did some damage to all of these plants here. And so we're going to see if our Milwaukee chainsaw here is going to cut through all of that because it's kind of delicate material. So that'll be interesting to see. This is actually, I think this is a nuisance. This should not be in any type of residential area at all. You can see this one right here. I'm gonna just cut him right there. Yeah, so it just slices right through it pretty good. Cause it's kind of a semi thick stalk. This one here, cut him there. He's probably okay. Dead in the door now. I'll just cut him there. Pull that guy out there. This is flopping around. Cut him there. So yeah, it's cutting through this stuff pretty good. All of these that are bent are gonna get cut. See that? Before you know it, you, you'll end up with a whole truckload of stuff here. See? Got this guy here. Okay, I've got this one here is trying to merge into this tree and there's no leaf on the end of it anyway, so that's dead. I'm gonna cut him out. That's just all soggy. There's not, not even really any way to cut the rest of that. Well, you can see it only barely took about two minutes to create this big pile back here and all of this pile over here. I mean, these kinds of things and palm trees, when you start cutting and cutting, in five minutes, you're gonna end up with a pile, huge pile. So yeah, so far I'm liking this Milwaukee hatchet here. This thing's doing a great job. Okay, and the one thing too is you gotta keep your eye on this oil level. If you see it starting to go down, you gotta make sure you fill up some more, okay? Now, as you can see, we have all sorts of exotic plants here. We've got all different types of palm trees, papaya trees, mango trees. And uh, usually with palm trees, when your fronds start getting like this, brown and yellow, that's around the time to cut them. And when anything is hanging below the horizontal, or as we call it, the nine o'clock, three o'clock position on the clock, right? Anything hanging below the horizontal, you want to get rid of it. Because at this point, it's not doing the tree any good. And it's robbing nutrients from the canopy from all of the new guys that are trying to sprout out. As long as the palm fronds are really green, like this one here, I'm going to have to decide, do I want to cut these two off? I, I probably will, because as long as they're green, they're still giving nutrients to the rest until they're really drooping down. Um, I have to decide. There's one up here that's bent. We'll cut him off. They usually tell you not to use chainsaws way up above your head, because you know they don't want branches crashing down on your head. These are very light fronds. I'm going to just reach to here and that's it. If it was any higher, you'd either use a pole saw or you'd bring in the tree professionals which is what I do at my house because my palm trees are over 20 feet tall. I don't even want to mess with that. But for this, I want to see, because this is really brittle, this is almost like paper. I want to see if it gets through it okay. Here we go. Okay, so that one went through. See, but this is paper here. I want to see. I don't know, man. Yeah, see how it just kind of flaps and tears it a little? Let me try it from above and see what it does. Yeah. For these, you probably want to just snip them. Got him. And you got two others that are hanging down. Yeah, when they're like, these are like mushy and stuff, that makes it a little harder. That one did okay. Okay, so let's do this one here. 
good. And then see this other one here's got to go too. Uh, did he shred? Yeah, he shredded. It was too soggy on the end of it. See, there's some rotten. And there's the papaya tree in full bloom, folks. Two papayas on the bottom there. I should have got those before the birds got it. But see that one there that's facing us on the bottom that, that looks like the blimp with the yellow spot? He's about ready. I might yank him tomorrow. Now you can see we've got more growing up here. I really don't like the fact that the tree is growing into the house, but you know, you get a full, you got a full harvest going there, so why kill it? But back here, you got this thing hanging here with this pod. What is this nonsense? We're gonna cut this. And actually, this, this whole tree right behind me, it's rotten at the bottom and it's very soggy. You can squeeze it like paper. I think this thing's done. We're going to have to fell it. So let's see if this, let's see if our Milwaukee hatchet can do the hatchet on it. Bury the hatchet. All right, let's see how it does here on this pod. Yeah, cut right through them like butter. Let's cut these guys off. We're gonna cut down this whole trunk anyway. Does that one good? Let's see this. Yeah, see? So now we're gonna concentrate on the trunk here because this thing is just rotten to the core. It's ready to fall over anyway. Okay, now trees like this, we're going to do it in sections just a lot easier. So we'll start by going, our, our first cut is the one third cut. Okay, so we've got that cut one third the way through. Then we'll come a few inches past it here and go all the way through it. Boom. All right, now we're going to do this section here and we're gonna do the same thing, basically. Cut in about one third of the way under. That's our one third under cut. So even though it says in the instructions that this is mainly a three inch cut, it cut through that thing. That was probably almost six inches. Of course, it was very soft and mushy too. All right, so that one went pretty good. Let's try to undercut this one too. All right, so that did okay. Let's try this one on the side. Got him. Now in my city where I live, they're very strict. They send inspectors around on all the streets looking and if they catch any companies that are charging you to cut your trees and they're not licensed arborists, they will stop them right there. They'll give them a fine. They'll have to produce a license because a lot of these guys are kind of doing it on the fly, uh, under the radar. They're not, doing, they're not paying taxes. They're not licensed. Sometimes they're lawn cutting guys that have a chainsaw that, that maybe think they know what they're doing, but they're, they really don't. And they overcut. And so that's why you want to make sure when somebody, when you're paying a company to come to your tree, make sure that they are a licensed arborist. Also, make sure that company has their own mulch truck, that they mulch everything right there on the spot and take it with them. You don't want them leaving a big pile like you're gonna see me do right here. We have bulk trash pickup day on Monday. Don't let that crazy guy Jeff up in your tree. Well, folks, so I did this entire pile right here, all 12 feet long of all of these branches and palm fronds and soggy palm branches and mango branches in about an hour. So it came out pretty good. I did it all with this Milwaukee hatchet tool. And there's our battery strength there. We're... Okay, well, one of my main complaints about the M12 battery system on Milwaukee's tools is the fact that you have to squeeze in these two tabs on either side, which requires a lot of great thumb and finger strength. So you really got to get in there and, and sometimes I just, I struggle with it. I can't get the battery to come off. I don't know why they just don't want to come out. And it's like that with every tool. Don't think that there's just something wrong here. It's not. It's every one of their tools. It just won't break it. There we go. And this is the way you do it, folks. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Wow, this one here is almost ready, folks. I waited too long on that one and the bugs beat us to it. 
Well, anyway, we had a lot of fun testing this tool, and if you found this video useful so far, hey, do us a favor, would you please give us a thumbs up down below that tells us that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, man, you are missing out on so many of the best videos. Let me tell you, folks, we do the most detailed tool reviews anywhere. And you certainly don't want to miss any of our world-class home remodeling videos where we show you everything from how to remodel all of your kitchens and your cabinets, how to remodel your bathrooms. We, we tear them all the way down to zero and start all over again. We show you how to do all sorts of tiling around your home and your bathrooms, and we cover wood flooring. We cover engineering disasters. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below. And even more important, click that little gray bell icon so you, that tells YouTube to alert you every time we upload a video. That way you won't miss a single one of our videos. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.